Okay, we are reviewing. I like to review a lot. That helps you when test day comes because I haven't just talked about the new stuff for today. If I just talk about the new stuff for today, it's easy enough, but it goes faster. But then you are remembering the stuff we did from three days ago. It really helps to kind of keep building. So here's a whole bunch of stuff we've learned so far, specifically seven questions that we've learned so far. And I like to practice them with you. So right now, I'd like you to number from one to seven and leave an empty spot in between each one so that you got room to write. Question number one is to take five pi over four and draw me a reference triangle and a reference angle in that triangle. You know, trig isn't that hard if you take it one little step at a time. But trig questions usually, literally, will have like seven little questions you have to answer. Little things you have to walk through to get to the answer. And if you don't know how to do one of those steps, you're done. So, like for instance, if you don't know where 5 pi over 4 is on the circle, then you're stuck already. So I'm trying to show you seven little things we've already learned. All right, number two, if sine is opposite over hypotenuse, what is cotangent? If I had just asked you tangent, it would have been a no-brainer, right? So if you know that tangent and cotangent are those kind of sister functions, you should know what to do. Number three. 150 degrees can be converted to radians by multiplying by something. Hopefully you know how to do that. Number four, I'm just going to walk through these really quick so you can then take a bunch of time to do them. Number four, I've given you the radius, I've given you the arc length, and there's that little formula that we taught you. You may remember it? I'll, I'll help the class by letting somebody say it. So S equals theta R. And that little formula helps you to figure out what theta is here. Okay, next one is number five and six are the 30, 60, 90 and the 45, 45, 90 triangles. You need to have those ratios, side ratios memorized. Like it's one, one square root of three, that kind of thing. That's not right, but just or that kind of ratio. Five and six are just what are those ratios. And number seven, if sine of theta is one over root two, then draw it's triangle. Like, it's got, they're giving you two sides by saying the sine is one over root two. You got to draw the triangle, it has three sides, and you got to figure out what the third side must be then. All right. So, give it some time. I'm hoping for a lot of six out of sevens here. Uh, if you haven't already written down number one, write it down quick because I got to scroll down. I just need to know on number one, where's five pi over four? and what reference angle and, and triangle would go with it. Okay, number, if I go like this, you can barely see number seven, and in a minute I'll move it up so you can see number seven. I'll pause for a minute while you work on those. Try to get six out of seven right, or better. All right, I'm going to start recording again here and tell you some answers. Number one, the reference triangle was right there, and the uh, reference angle was one-fourth of a pi, or 45 degrees. Number two, cotangent is adjacent over opposite. You just take the tangent, which is opposite over adjacent, and you flip it. Number three, we multiply by pi over 180, and we got five pi over six. After we reduce it here, five pi over six is what 150 degrees is. Next one, this one's S equals theta R is your key formula. And if they tell you two of them, you can figure out the other one. What did I tell you? I told you the radius was 7, and I told you the s, the arc length, was 9. So it's 9 equals theta times 7, divide by 7. 9 sevenths equals theta. I know it's a little weird for an angle, but 9 sevenths is the correct answer. Get used to the idea of an answer that doesn't have degrees on it. It's just 9 sevenths of a radian which is like one point something radians. And radians are like about 60 degrees each. So, you know, they're, it's different because you don't have a unit. It's kind of weird. Nine sevenths was right. Raise your hand if you had nine sevenths. Okay, good. And the next one, five and six. You should know these like the back of your hand. One, two, square root of three. And one, one, square root of two. And number seven, sine of theta is one, over root 2. First thing I would do is draw a triangle and then I'd label the theta. 
And now I can go and pick out what sides are what. And it told me opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite was 1, hypotenuse was root 2, and I quickly realized, ooh, I didn't quite draw that right, because it should be more of a, of a fat, short triangle like this, and it should be 1, 1, root 2. I could just say this is 1, but I'm noting that my triangle is too long and skinny then. But either way, it's a 1, 1, root 2 triangle. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. Do you get how once you've got this triangle, they could ask you, and this is a typical ACT question. They'll tell you one thing like this. Sine of theta is this, and now what's cosine of theta? Well, my theta I picked was right here. If sine of theta is 1 over root 2, what would cosine of theta be? What is cosine of theta? Yeah, Jason of Repinus. So what is it? 1 over root 2. It's kind of counterintuitive, but it's the same exact answer. In this triangle, you get the same exact answer. What if they'd said, what's tangent of theta? Well, I've got the triangle all drawn. It's really easy. Once I get the triangle drawn, piece of cake. Tangent's opposite over adjacent, so 1 over 1, so 1. All right. Who had 6 or better out of 7? Awesome. Then you're on track and you're ready to learn the next thing. The next thing, uh, it helps to make helper triangles. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If I have this triangle here, and it kind of looks like it's a 45, 45, 90. In fact, I'll even label it as such. I'm going to say the normal sides are 1, 1, root 2, right? It's going to be really easy at the beginning here, because I'll just like do some easy ones. I'll say, what if this is an 8? Then do you know what this is supposed to be? An 8. And what's this one supposed to be? 8 root 2. Now, if you, that wasn't easy for you, I can explain it with the helper triangle. Now, again, I know some of you are going to be like, why would I even need the helper triangle? I, that was easy. Because it's going to get a lot harder. Okay, so here's the simple helper triangle, 1, 1, square root of 2. It's, you make it in the same orientation, like, in other words, you don't make it backwards like this. That will confuse you. You make the triangle in the same exact orientation with the slanty side, the the uh, what's it called, the hypotenuse, going like this, same way this is going, you know, make the helper triangle look the same except smaller, and then you label it so that when this side is like, let's say it's 6, you go, oh yeah, that's right, these two are the same as each other, right, so this has to be a 6, and then this last side's a little harder to think through, but you go, well, how many times bigger is this? Oh, it's 6 times bigger, so this is 6 times the square root of 2. But that's not going to work for everybody. This way that I'm about to show you will work, I think, for everybody. You've all set up proportions before. And a proportion looks like this. X over 3 equals 5 over 10. Do you remember proportions like that? And here you can cross multiply to solve this proportion. You know, you just multiply the 5 times the 3 and the X times the 10. Or there's something even easier. If I'm trying to get X alone, can't I just multiply by 3 and X will be alone? So I just multiply by 3 here. So the final answer, if you multiply that by 3, it's really like 3 over 1, right? So it's 5 times 3 is 15 over 10. Okay, you remember how to set up proportions like that? I'm seeing a few blank stairs. I'm going to make you a dry one. Everybody make this one. 3 over x equals uh, 5 over 9. Solve that quick. Cross multiply. Or you could multiply everything by x and everything by 9. It's another way to clear my fractions, but personally, I'd cross multiply. In case you've forgotten it, it looks like this. 5x equals 27, and then I'm almost done. Divide by what? Divide by 5. So the answer is 27 fifths. Raise your hand if you got that. Okay, good. Watch me do it a different way that's, that's cool, but different. I want to clear my fractions. Do you get how I have to multiply by x and I have to multiply by 9? So I'm going to multiply by 9x on both sides. What happens is this x cancels this, this 9 cancels this, and I got 27 equals 5x. Do you get how that's pretty much the same thing as cross-multiplying? Except different. And it follows that same pattern we've been doing of clearing the denominators. So do it any way you want to, but you're going to need to know how to, to set up proportions. All right, back to this problem. 
If I have my little helper triangle set up, which is what I strongly recommend for these problems, then this becomes a simple question of setting up the proportion. Let's say I want to know that side right there. Since triangles are usually labeled with A, B, and C as their legs, I'm going to use this to be C. Then I set up a proportion. Something over something equals something over something. Do you get that the 6 goes with the 1? So 6 goes with 1 like what? C goes with the square root of 2. And now, if I'm trying to find C, do you get how I just have to multiply by the square root of 2 and I'll be done? Watch this. Square root of 2 here, square root of 2 here. That cancels that. You get all the C's alone. 6 root 2 over 1, and 6 root 2 divided by 1 is just 6 root 2. So the answer is 6 root 2. All right. Here's another one that kind of blows people's minds sometimes. You know, normally this is like 1, 1 and square root of 2. But what if the long side is like 12? It just freaks people out sometimes. So, set up a helper triangle. Everybody, draw that triangle and then set up a helper triangle right next to it. The helper triangle, you got to label with 1, 1, and the root 2. I'm going to make my helper triangle. Same orientation, you know, with the hypotenuse going the same way. 1, 1, root 2. Now, let's pick this side here to be x, because generally speaking, things that go left, right, those are x, right? So, let's pick that to be x. Set up a proportion, then. What is to what as what is to what? Try it. Some of you aren't writing. Grab that pencil, make it move. Twelve is to root two. Now you didn't have to start with those two, but that those are a good couple that would work for both the hypotenuses. I wonder if you could say hypotenai. If there's multiple hypotenuses, kind of like hippopotamuses and then your hippopotami. No wait. Anyway. Um, 12 is to root 2 as x is to 1. And then the x is pretty much just x divided by 1 is just x, right? So isn't it 12 over root 2? Raise your hand if you had that one right. Good. Let's do another one like that. Let's say it's the 1, 2, you know, normal is 1, 2, square root of 3, right? But what if I don't do that? What if I don't put the square root there? What if I put it, like, make this a 9? Set up a helper triangle. Figure it out. Question. Oh, good question. 30, 60, 90. We're only going to give you 30, 60, 90s or 45, 45, 90s. Because otherwise you can't do it. Without a calculator. The 30, 60, 90 triangle? Yep. And the 45, 45, 90 triangle. And I call them helper triangles, but I'm guessing that that's not the correct mathematical term. All right, so I would set it up as a 1, 2, square root of 3. And it's like, whoa, there's supposed to be a square root of 3 there, not a 9. That's why if you try to do it with like, oh, the triangle's three times bigger than the other one, it's not always going to work real nice. How many times bigger is this than this? No, that's, that's, that's not very fun to figure out. So instead, I would rather use proportions. Let's figure out this side right here. I'm going to call it C because that's what we usually would call it since they're usually A, B, and C. So I'll figure out C. C is to 2 as... <coughs> yep. Could you have gone another way? Sure. Could have done this another way. I'm going to multiply by 2 here and finish this, though. <coughs> Excuse me. C is equal to 18 over root 3. 
Some people still think you multiply by 2 on the top and the bottom, and that doesn't make any sense because then you're saying it's 2 over 2, and that's not 2. That's 1. If you're going to multiply by something, multiply it only on the top. <coughs> Sorry about the coughing. Yes? If you want to set this up so the C's on the bottom, I can do that. There'll still be an answer of 18 over root 3. Let's just remember that, okay? That you agree that I did it right the first time with the 8? Okay, so let's just show you where the C could be on the bottom. Then I'd set it up like this. 2 goes with C like root 3 goes with 9. Now, the reason I don't like that as much is because now I got the C on the bottom, and I can't just multiply by one thing and fix it. I can still do it, though. I'm going to multiply by C and 9 on both sides. 9C here and 9C here. That way these cancel and those cancel. And I have 18 equals root 3 times C. 9 divided by root 3. And I have C is equal to 18 over root 3. And does that look a lot like what I just had over here? It's just different, more steps. If you have a choice, put the variable on top. Absolutely. Okay, let's do one more like that. Let's say it's a 45, 45, 90 again. And let's say that this side, is, if this had been like a 4, do you get how easy this should be? What's this one? 4, and what's this one? 4 square root of 2. And if that doesn't come natural, it's all right. It would have worked with the triangles. Those are the easy kind. The hard kind are where they go like this. This is square. Uh, it's supposed to be square root of 2. I'm going to make it the square root of 3 just to mess with your head. So, make the helper triangle, set it up, and take the advice of one of your classmates who was saying, probably be smartest to put the variable on top. And if you solve for one of your sides, the other side's going to be exactly the same. So I don't care which one you solve for. Call it A or call it B. doesn't matter. They'll be the same. On this one, I would make my helper triangle look like this, and I would go 1, 1, square root of 2, and then I would say, hmm, square root of 2 and 3 kind of are matched up, and that's, they're totally different numbers. We'll just set up a little proportion. I'm going to call this A. You could have called it A or B. It doesn't matter. You could have called it Q if you wanted to. And I'm going to set up a proportion and say, what goes with what? Well, A on the top is smart, because then I won't have to like do more than one step. Over A goes with 1 like what? Square root of 3 goes with square root of 2. Excellent. And then a over 1 is just a, so hey, I'm done. Square root of 3 over square root of 2. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Awesome. Okay, so uh, that's most of it for today, but there's one more kind, and they are the tricky kind. Um, if you have a triangle, do you remember that if you have a triangle, that the angles always have to add up to 180, 180. So if I tell you that one of your angles here is 30, you'd expect this to be a 30, 60, 90 triangle, but what if they, what if it's not? What if that's 30 and this is 45? Well, then you can figure out the other angle, can't you? Has to add up to 180 total, so let's take 180 minus 75, which makes it what? 105, I believe. Is that right? Double check me. Okay, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Yep, one adds up to 180 now. Okay, so the point here is you can't really do much until you have a 30, 60, 90 triangle or a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So what you going to do? Who's got an idea? <laughs> How about this? You're going to get a hint from me right now. Oh, no. Okay, I'll get a hint from Alika. Uh, yes, but we're going to do that by making it have another triangle. You know how? Yes. What if I were to drop a perpendicular? Do you remember doing that in, in geometry a lot? If I drop a perpendicular, then that means for sure that angle is a 90, right? And what did I just make? I made... Two triangles, one of which is 30, 60, 90, and the other one which is what? 45, 45, 90. You get that? Okay, that's a key moment. Uh, next, 
you're going to have a triangle that looks like this, and they're going to say it's equilateral, and they're going to ask you, how tall is it? Okay, if it's equilateral, they don't just say that for, for nothing. That means something. What does it mean? True. All the angles are 60, 60, and 60. Now, do, can you tell then that what did I just divide it into? Two 30, 60, 90s, huh? Okay. Next thing. If they said it's equilateral, there's one more thing it tells you. Besides that the angles are all 60, what else does it tell you? It doesn't tell you that line yet. It tells you this line. And it tells you that line. Yeah. And therefore, do you get that I now could set up a trig problem because I have an angle and one side? As soon as you have one angle and one side in a triangle, you can figure out any of the other sides. Sine of 60 equals opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite's what? A over the hypotenuse is what? And you think you could solve it from there? I hope so. Sine of 60, what if they said, can't use a calculator? You find the sine of 60 using your helper triangle? Yes, you can. Sine of 60, here's 30, 60, 90. There's the 60. And it's 1, 2, root 3. This helper triangle is really helpful. Can I get sine of 60 out of that? Sure I can. Sine's opposite over hypotenuse. What's the opposite? That. What's the hypotenuse? That. So I know the sine of 60. It's root 3 over 2. Helper triangle. Okay. Last thought. Uh, in the unit circle... Something really important is always true. How big is its radius if this is the unit circle? What is a unit? One. The unit circle, a clue on this is anytime they say unit circle, you have to know that unit, a single unit, just the word unit, means one. So therefore, it's a circle that has a radius of one. So that means this distance right here is one. All right, that's important. Now, next thing they're going to do is say, okay, you have a unit circle that has a 120 degree angle in it. Where does it touch the unit circle? Do you get that the 120 is like bigger than 90 and so it's like, you know, somewhere in this neighborhood? Does that make sense for 120? Where does it touch the unit circle? Trig is all about circles and what? Triangles. You see a triangle I can draw now? I do. Boom, boom. How long is this side right here? Uh, we don't know that yet. You, you could assume it's half, but don't, don't assume. That's x, and this is what? No, 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 close. This one is what? Y. y. This one is what? Aha. And we know one of the angles in it, don't we? If this one was 120, what's this one? Now you got an angle and you got a side. Now you can figure out the whole rest. Now some of you might be still be like, okay, well I can figure out X and I can figure out Y, but how do I figure out that point? That point right there is just X comma Y. So if you know X and you know Y, the answer is X comma Y. So figure out X, figure out Y, and you'll have it. How do I do this? Well. Make a helper triangle again. The helper triangle is going to be really handy. It's 30, 60, 90, and I'm going to keep it in the same orientation with the 60 down here and the 30 up there. And I'm going to say this is 1, 2, root 3. And then I go, huh, looks like my triangle here compared to this triangle here, this one is just half as big, or you could say my helper triangle is twice as big. So you can figure it out that way. Or you can set up a proportion. Say, I want to say x is like what? 1. x is to 1 as what? 1 is to 2. I know some of you are grinding down here. It's the end of the day, and we're in the last few minutes, but that's, that's how you do that one. Does x go with 1? Look at it. Does x go with 1? See how x and 1 go together now? They're both the bottom side of the triangle. x is to 1 as 1 is to 2. That's what this means. And then I've got x alone. 
for y, you're going to set up y is to root 3 as, and then you can finish it. Okay. That was a couple of your problems off the worksheet. So let's give you the worksheet now, and I'll tell you which one that one was. That one specifically was problem number 19. You may want to do the number 19 while it's fresh in your head because it just showed you that one. The ones in the front side are a lot easier. They just have to draw a helper triangle and they'll zip, zip. Okay, here you go. Would you please try to remember to get that uh, parent permission slip signed? It would be much appreciated. And that's all I have for the video for. Actually, you know what? I might do a couple problems with you, so I'm going to pause the video for just a second and then do a couple on the video. Number one. Let's do number one. It's easy. This is a little bit excessive. Let's uh, skip some. Ready? Cross off all the multiples of 4, except for 20. No, I already did number 19 for you. you got to try one like that yourself. Skip all the multiples of 4. 4 and 8. No, 1 is not a multiple of 4. Okay. So here we go, number 1. The question says 14 on this side. The hypotenuse is 14, and it's 30, 60, 90, because this is 60, so this must be 30. I'm going to make myself a helper triangle right next to it in the same orientation. And uh, let's see, I should probably make that at a little different angle. Make it a little more like, oh, I'm having a hard time drawing here. It's just like, yeah, I didn't make this steep enough in the first place, so I'll make it more steep on my helper triangle. There we go, okay, and this is 14, but on my helper triangle, I go 1, 2, root 3. And then if you can just see it and say, oh, look, my helper triangle is 7 times smaller, or you could say it, my problem is 7 times bigger than my helper triangle, you can just times everything by 7. If you want to do it that way, go ahead. So then this must be 7 root 3, and this must be 7 times 1 is 7. Do you get that? Some of you will. If that didn't work for you, then just go like this. Call this. Anytime that goes, something's going across, I'd call it X and Y. Or you could call it A and B, whichever you want. I'm going to use X and Y this time. So I'm going to go the little proportion guy, 14. Oh, wait, I should really start with the X. X is to what? Say it if you know it, please. X is to 1 as what? Now we got to go back to the X triangle. X is to 1 as, what's back? 14 is to 2. So X must equal 7. Then you find the Y. For Y, I go Y is to square root of 3 as 14 is to Two. So you multiply both sides by root 3, and you'll have it. And it'll be 7 times root 3, 7 root 3. All right. Backside, seriously, smart. Next three minutes, I know you'd rather just pack up and, and be done, but number 19, I did it for you five minutes ago. It's still in your short-term memory. If you go do it right this second, it'll go really quick. If you wait for it at home, it'll be a lot slower. To your life, decide to do what you want. But number 19 would be smart to do right this minute. All right, that's all I got for you for today.